Hey, Christ Victorious. It's Pastor Toby here. As you can see, I'm in my office and it's Tuesday. I'm making a recording on Tuesday because Eastern Cowra County Schools just called me to let me know that uh, my kids, our school is canceled on Wednesday and Thursday. And I know that Waconia canceled theirs a couple of hours ago. So happy couple of days off. I hope that you are safe, that you are warm that you're in your home, that you're able to do what you need to do, whether it's work, whether it's spend time with your kids, whether it's play in the snow, whatever it is, I hope that you have everything you need, warmth, uh, shelter, food, and water, and everything else. So, But today is Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, and, and for a lot of people, they celebrate this as Fat Tuesday or Shrove Tuesday, and down south, they translate that, that phrase as Mardi Gras. So this season that we're starting today on Tuesday, but really kicking off tomorrow on Wednesday is called this season of Lent. It's a season of the church here. And it's, it's a time where we intentionally take time to reflect on, on Jesus and ourselves. And a lot of people have different kinds of traditions. Maybe it's, it's stuffing yourself or having a parade on, on Fat Tuesday or Mardi Gras. Or, or maybe it's it's Wednesday, going to church and getting ashes put on your forehead, or or maybe it's something else. Maybe it's giving something up because you want to abstain or fast from something so that you can spend more time or giving of yourself to something else. But all these all these traditions, they're they're, they're to help us intentionally focus on Jesus. Life, death, and resurrection. Who we get to be now because he died and rose again for us. And the Red Letter Challenge, that's what Christ victorious, that's what we're going to do during Lent, is, is walk through these 40 days of Lent. And the challenge is actually an invitation. It's an invitation to you and to everybody else to, to well... Dig into Jesus' words, those, those red letters. You know, in my Bible, maybe you have a Bible like this too, but there's 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 words that are red, and, and those are the words that, that Jesus spoke. And, and we're going to take time to really dig into those red letters, Jesus' words. We're going to read them and then and then do what he says we should be doing. And that sounds great and simple, but it isn't always easy, is it? That's that's why it's a challenge. And through these 40 days, we're going to learn to grow in our relationship with Jesus and how to live more like him and be a better testimony of, of him to the world. So, hey, Christ Victorious, are you with me? Let's let's do this together, okay? Uh, have, have you ever heard the phrase, the saying, the road to hell is paved with good intentions? Well, as I started thinking about the Red Letter Challenge, I started thinking about that phrase and, and and actually about a, a trip that I took with my dad. See, growing up, canoeing and camping, that was a big part of, of our family. And, and whenever anybody turned 13, my, my brother or my sister or I, my dad would take us on, on our very first trip to the Bonnie Waters. So together, we would get to pick out the route and, 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 and make all the preparations. And when the day come, we would load all of our stuff in the van and head north. And it was going to be a fantastic trip. And it was. We had we had nice weather. We we had beautiful sunsets, dry tents. We we shot class two rapids. We fished and napped, and it was just awesome. And then one day, one day we got to a portage with a beautiful lake uh, and an ideal campsite over on the other side. And along the portage, there was this fast moving river with basically class three rapids. And, and Dad said, you know, we could make the portage. That's fine. Or we could shoot the rapids. So it was up to me. So we got out and walked along and studied the rapids. And we made a plan. And, and each movement of the canoe, each, each stroke of the paddle, it had to be intentional or we get swamped. Let's just say I was humbly hesitant. But we tied everything in and got our life vests on. And, well, it was terrifying. Uh, I called the rocks. We did, we did draws and sweeps and, and power strokes. And everything was going right until, until it wasn't right there in the, in the very crux of the run. We completely missed where we were supposed to be. 
So we're way over here. And I tried my best to, to correct and do a pry and, and push away. But just like that, whew, everything that wasn't tied down, including my dad and I, we were in the water. Everything, everything ended up flipped over. You see, even though we had the right intentions, we completely missed the mark and, and everything was completely soaked. Maybe you can relate to that. Maybe maybe you had the best intentions and you totally missed the mark for one reason or another. Maybe you were going down a path and you had a good plan with good intentions, but you missed that mark and you got totally soaked. Sometimes our, our faith walk is like that, though, isn't it? We we start out with, with good intentions, but we we end up totally missing the mark for one reason or another. Or sometimes sometimes we don't even get in the boat and we totally miss out on the ride that Jesus has for us, for the opportunity to, to be his followers and to be his witnesses. But here's the thing. In Acts 1, 8, Jesus says to you and I, he says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth. So I'm going to ask you, how's it going? How are you doing at being a witness for Jesus? Now, I know many of you are, are serious about your faith and your desire to follow Jesus. And we are so blessed here at Christ Victorious to have so many people like that. But, well, maybe a better question is, is what does the world think, right? You know, the ones that we're supposed to be witnessing to. Do they think that we are hitting the mark? Well, actually, there's been a lot of studies that answer these questions. Back in 2012, there was this group, the Barna Group, their research group, and they published their findings in the book Unchristian. They had done this three-year study, and they discovered that in general, unchurched Christians generally viewed Jesus followers as judgmental, hypocritical, anti-this, anti-that, out of touch, insensitive, and self-centered. Uh, maybe you and I think, well, that's, that's not fair. That's not right. What about all the good things that we do, like, like, like our hearts for mission and do something different every single month? Or mission trips. We go on mission trips to Liberia to, to help grow it and take care of it and, 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 and serve other people. Or, or what about planting royal family in northeast Minneapolis? We, we've been a part of that, right? We've been doing good stuff. Well, while the news tries to, to, and it has a tendency to characterize Jesus followers as judgmental, insensitive hypocrites. The Barna Group, they found in that 50% of the responders said they based their views on personal contacts with Christians. The author said that, that many of those outside of Christianity, they reject Christians and Jesus because they feel rejected by Christians. I think they're kind of saying that we miss the mark. If we reflect on how we're doing and representing Jesus, all of us should come to the conclusion that maybe we have good intentions, but we completely miss the mark of where we want to be. Tonight in our reading from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 7, we learn that, that, that because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in, in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even though we were dead in our transgressions, it's by grace that you've been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us in the heavenly realms with Christ Jesus. That's awesome news. That, that out, of, out of love, our merciful God, he, he sent Jesus his son to suffer, to die, and to rise again for us, and then saturates us with, with all, of, all of his grace and mercy and love. And if this is what Jesus is known for, for love and, and good works and for hitting the mark, the mark that God gives us for us, then who'd want to reject him? Who'd want to spend... any time without him. Instead, we want to spend all of our time with him and, and get to know him more, right? But, but when we get di distracted by, by sin in the world and, and sidetracked by, from, from who Jesus is and, and everything that he does for us, then we start, well, we start missing the mark a little bit, right? 
So when we start telling people everything that's wrong with them and how to be more like us, then, then we've changed the story and the picture of who Jesus is. And we start, again, we're hitting that wrong target and, and we swap the canoe. See, if we're hitting the targets, judgmental, decisive, hypocritical, and sensitive, and, and, and selfish, then, then obviously we're not aiming at the targets that Jesus set out for us. And no matter our intentions, if we're not succeeding at the things that actually matter to Jesus, then we're doing a whole heck of a lot more harm than we are good. If we, if we know the grace that he's won for us and saturates us with and transforms us with, then we can't just sit back and let let this, that 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 picture be the one that we show of Jesus. We gotta we gotta change the story. We we gotta tell we gotta tell Jesus story. See, that's that's the big idea of the red letter challenge to change the picture that we give of Jesus by taking His words, the ones in your Bible with red letters, and put them in the practice literally to live more like Jesus. So that our lives become a better testimony to the world. And that's the simple idea behind this, this, this red letter challenge. That's the simple idea that's, that's going to change you and I as followers of Jesus. And it's going to change the world. And in this, in this 40-day challenge, it's not really a burden. See, because this is God's intention for us. It's what he made us for, and it's what he saved us for, and it's what he's gifted us for. Paul says in our reading from Ephesians, for it is by grace that you've been saved through faith, and, and this isn't from yourselves. You see, it, it, it's a gift from God. It's not anything that we do so that nobody, nobody can boast. Because you and I were God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which which God God prepared in advance for you and I to, to do. See, Jesus doesn't just leave us floundering there in, in the water. He, he rescues us and he helps us to get into his canoe. And then when we're in there, then he helps us by equipping us and he stays with us so that you and I can totally hit the mark. And as we listen to his words, and as we put them into practice, he helps us totally every step of the way. So for the next 40 days, everyone who's here or, or online, we want you to spend 40 days listening to God's words, to Jesus' words, and then do them. And, and when you do that, you're, you're going to change the story that we tell about Jesus. You think you can do that? I think, I think that everybody here at Christ Victorious can do that. And, and to help us help us do that, there's a couple of tools that we have here at, at, at Christ Victorious to, to help us to be more intentional in this and, and to help us track with, with, with God and, and with each other. And, and they're in the lobby. And if you've seen them over the last couple of weeks, they're there and they're still going to be there this Sunday, too. So, so when we all dig ourselves out, come on in and you can get them. First off, there's, there's this, this calendar. And, and we got everything on it, the date, the Bible verse, and, and everything. And on the back side is this list of how to live out Jesus' words. You can fold this up and, and stick it in your Bible. And the calendar, it comes from, from this book, the, the Red Letter Challenge. It, it's, it's by another Lutheran pastor. His name is Pastor Zach Zender. He was, a, he was a church planter for like a decade or so down in Florida. Now he's out in Nebraska where, where Pastor Aaron is. And, and there's a devotion for us each day of this 40-day challenge. And we got a, a bookmark too, so you can keep your place where you are. Uh, and there's, there's numbers on, on both sides where you can just mark them off and check off the day that you, you've done. So you can keep track of things. And these are in, in the lobby. Um, and they're available for you. Now we ask that if you can consider a ten dollar donation to help cover the cost of everything, B but we don't want that to get in the way. So they're available to you, and and we just we just want to get these things in everybody's hands. We also have challenge groups, people who are intentionally meeting weekly for this for this study, this challenge. And I don't know about you, but but when I take out a challenge, then then I'm always better when other people are part of it. See, I think we're better together. 
before I wrap up, I just want to mention that as we go through the Red Letter Challenge, we're going to see five themes. Five themes that 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 we see highlighted throughout the words of Jesus. And, and we're, each week, we're going to introduce one, and we're going to dig into each one of those over the next five weeks. The first one that you're, you're going to see is, is being. Uh, being with Jesus. What, is, what does that mean? What does it mean to just sit and be with Jesus, to dwell with him and to listen to his word? The, the, the second one, there we go. The second one is forgiving. What does it mean to, to, to walk in God's grace, being forgiven and forgiving others? The third one, there we go, is serving. God designed us to, to love him, to love one another, to serve him and to serve one another. So, so on that week, look for chances to use what you've been blessed with to bless other people. And if you're in a group, just to, to give you a heads up, that week, your group is supposed to look for a way to serve together. Uh, the, the, fourth, the, fourth week, the fourth theme that we're going to look at is, 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 well, giving. See, Jesus talks about generosity more than any other topic except for the, the kingdom of God. And, and when you follow Jesus and do what he does, then you just can't help but become generous. And then finally, our last one is, is going. You see, God, God rescued us. Jesus rescued us. And he makes us his missionary people. He invites us into the kingdom of God and to spread that, to grow that. And he equips us to, to be his witnesses and to go and to share his good news with the whole world. So five, five themes. Being, forgiving, serving, giving, and going. Five themes that you and I were going to intentionally focus on in our Sunday sermons and our Sunday Bible studies and our midweek challenge groups. And our hope, our hope is that every member of Christ Victorious, of our of our church family, and anybody else that you that you want to invite to be a part of this or go along with, or anybody else who, who is here, that we would commit ourselves to these daily rhythms of, of listening to Jesus' words and then putting them into practice. And then, hey, hold on. Hold on, because it's going to be an exciting ride, just like shooting the rapids. You see, God promises that in his word, that when he sends it out, it never comes back to him empty. It, it always goes with his power to accomplish what he wants it to. So, so hey, are you ready? Are you ready to take on this red letter challenge? Come on, Christ Victorious. Let's, let's do this. Let's do this together. In Jesus' name. And all by his grace. Amen.